that's uh, that's me. I'm Chris, and uh, I'm still an MVP. Wow. All right, let's go back and uh, take a look at a few things, shall we? So today, what we're going to talk about is the list formatting repo itself today. So if you're not familiar, we've got a beautiful list formatting repo. And the repo here we've had for, I guess it's been three or four years at this point. Uh, it's extremely popular, used all the time. One of the issues we've had, though, is inconsistency across samples. So, you know, we've got a ton of samples, we've got about 250, I think, at this point um, across column, view, and uh, form uh, samples, right? And if you come here, you know, we've got this this way where you can come in here, you can click on column samples, right? These are organized by the column type and then some more details on them. And this is an okay way to go, right? You can click on, you know, say this one by uh, Andre, right? Uh, and this is cool, right? It's got a README. You can see it's got, it's got viewer permits on how to set it all up and some more details along with all the files here. And that's one way to do it, right? But you go back and you're like, wait, which one was I on? And so on. So it can be difficult to kind of browse this list. Um, and we're aware of that, but it's also, you know, one of the best ways to kind of maintain samples and go forward here. So uh, one of the things we've done is we've updated the documentation all over the place. Uh, and we have this idea of a documentation site, which is you know, linked here from the front, right? This PNP github.io slash list formatting. And again, I'm sure David will paste that link in there. Um, and in the past, we've set that up. Um, we've had some interesting listings, right? So we had this idea of grouping those columns uh, by various things like column type or operator. Um, and all that's very helpful. You know, we put that up here. And if you haven't had a chance to look at this, you know, feel free. It's great. But we had a lot of issues uh, over the past, I don't know, year, um, at least where a few things have disappeared, right? Here's all of our column samples. You can tell that's a problem, right? Uh, we'd probably want a few listed there. Um, and then we had some of our documentation uh, just said coming soon. So I've gone through and done a pretty massive update to these things. Um, and if we go to the site now, uh, we should see that uh, we have our column samples list here, right? So all of those are updated and those are um, accurate. So that has every sample that's available along with uh, form samples. Um, and our groupings have changed a little bit, right? So we still have, you know, the same groupings we had before, but now they are in collapsible sections. So if you're looking to say, do a column format and you're like, yeah, I've got this uh, image uh, column, right? Is there any for, you know, samples for that? Uh, you click on that and you say, oh yeah, we have one sample, right? It's the image light box. And then you can click on that and it'll take you directly to that sample. So that's one way to do that. Uh, but you can also hover it over to get uh, some more details and so on. But we have some additional uh, groupings here, which I think will be very helpful for you. Uh, so we have the column type, which is very helpful for column formatting. Uh, we also have by operator. So if you're looking to see how a specific operator works, right? Maybe it's a brand new one, like say, uh, you know, the get user image, right? So you click on that and you can see, you know, how do I use this thing? Well, there's 14 samples that use get user image, right? So you can go to any of these and you can find all of the samples that use these operators. So any of the operators besides the basic ones, like, you know, basic math and comparison, because most samples use those are listed here. So a great way to learn and see specific examples of how those are done. Uh, we also have the placeholder tokens. So these are the kind of the magic strings here that are used, right? So you want to see where we're using some of the new uh, localization. We've got the one sample right now, uh, but we've got a bunch of samples for say row index and so on. So you can check all of those out. Uh, and then of course we can keep going here. We've got action. Um, you can see we actually don't have a sample that shows this action just yet, uh, which means that this, when you see this little icon, that is uh, a clue that maybe contributing is something you want to do, right? So we could use a sample on open context menu. So you can see that. So this is a great way to find out like, hey, you know, where are there not enough samples or where are there no samples in these? So that's a great way to kind of find that. So if you're looking to contribute, uh, this is also helpful for you. Um, you know, we could expand or collapse all of those as well. Wow, wow, wow. And uh, then we've got categories. These are uh, pseudo made up. Um, it's just another way to kind of look at these. Um, all of these can be edited. I'll show you how you can submit suggestions and changes to these as well. I'm going to skip the class for now. We also have feature. So this is a new one. So this just calls out very specific kind of feature types. So if you're looking to see who has you know, created samples for each of these, uh, you can see those as well. And then, of course, our authors here are all here. So if you'd like to see, you know, maybe you liked uh, Andres, uh, some of his recent demos, right? So you want to see all the samples that Andres put together, right? You can see all those. Or, you know, you want to come down here, you really like uh, Tetsuya's style. All right, so Tetsuya does a lot of beautiful samples. He's got 50 samples, you know, and they're all beautiful. 
You can check them all out here across view and column format. You can see this says column or view here. You find out the details on those. Uh, and then, of course, we have a few. There's not a ton, uh, but the work in SharePoint 2019, we've called those out specifically and how to use those. And then finally, this is a big area for us is by class. So what I've gone through and done is I've taken every possible class that is available to you to use inside uh, list formatting, and I've called those out. So we can go to, say, the MSBG color classes. You got a few details on them. They're all listed here. Um, including the ones that are not used in samples. So this is a great way to see what classes are even available to you, right? So um, if you're just looking for a class, you know, you may be looking for a specific sample to see how that's going. We are not listing out everything the sample does. We do give a few hints, right? You can see the color over here, for instance, on these BG colors is the accurate color. Uh, but we're not showing you a lot of the details, right? Which for most of these, these are fine, right? It's just the background color. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of classes you may not even been aware of. Right, that uh, that may help you as well, right? So we've got a lot of these SP row or SP card classes that are a little more generic. They also have several animation style classes that can be used. In fact, there are a few samples that use them, right? Um, so you can see how those happen. Um, and so check all that out. Again, a great way to get that class listing, which I found has been very, very hard to find uh, without just inspecting the page, which is a mess all on its own. So check these out. That's a great way to do that. Also updated the contribution docs, right? So in the past we had uh, no information at all. Uh, so Louise went through and she added um, a lot of really great information in here. Um, and I've gone through and just kind of updated that as well to give them more details about how we do our issues and things with this particular repo. So if you're looking to contribute, this is the place to start. All right, so all that. Now I mentioned the idea that you would be able to specify, you know, this stuff um, and talk about where does all this information come from? Right. And is this information in the new sample browser? Yes, it is. So if you wanted to use the new sample browser from Microsoft, right, kind of the all inclusive samples, um, all of our samples have been updated. Um, several were kind of missing from there. All of those have been cleaned and added, and those should all be uh, ready to go as long as the sample browser is working correctly. Right. So again, lots of different ways to find these samples. Uh, we're trying to make it as easy as possible to find exactly what you need. Because a lot of these samples you can just take and go, right? You don't need to, to even tweak anything. They just work. You've got a column type. Um, you've got something you're specifically looking for. You just grab the sample, copy it, paste it in. You're good to go. Or you want to tweak it. But that's one use case. The other use case is these people that are trying to learn, right? Or trying to contribute back. And that's where these groupings really, really come in handy. Oh, and one last thing. Dark mode. Oh, yeah. For no reason at all. All right. So let's take a look at what, you know, how does this work? All right, so behind the scenes in every sample, uh, there is a sample.json file. And in this sample.json file, this is what describes everything that we use to sort everything out, uh, but it's also what's used by that sample browser. So when you submit a sample, if you don't include a sample.json, we will add one for you. So every sample has one of these. And if you see one of these, that's why they're in this assets folder, because it's also JSON, and that can be a little confusing. You don't need these at all. Um, for you know, doing the uh, the actual sample, the only thing you need is the format itself, right? That's it. But to describe this and everything else, it all goes in the sample.json. And here you can see we have this idea of our categories, our tokens, and so on. And how you set all this up is there is a tool that I've written called Farrier. Um, it is available to you. In fact, let me pull up that. Where the heck? I have way too many windows. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so over in our community tooling repo, so PNP community tooling, this may not be a repo you're very familiar with because there's really just a couple of tools in there. Uh, but you can see we have this GitHub batch issue updater, but we also have, uh, as of 35 minutes ago, the Farrier tool. Now, there's not really documentation in here yet uh, that is coming, but you can check this out. You can run this um, as needed um, and see how that works. And what it does is it goes through and validates your samples. Right, so it has a few different things so we can validate samples. Now it uses configuration files to validate those samples. In this case, I've set it up for list formatting, but this can be set up for um, maybe it doesn't have to be even GitHub, right? So this is just validating things within the file system. Uh, so you can see here for sample validation, the idea of tokens um, and so on has all been written here, but you can see where we're suggesting categories. Uh, this is the analyze function. Let's, let's class that down. But you have this idea of validating the sample, right? And we, we make sure all the files exist, everything's named correctly. 
Uh, you know, all the contents inside the README exist and everything is there. So there are, I forget how many, 500 plus rules that we're running against every sample in this repo. Um, and you could create all of your own rules for whatever files you have. Um, and the way this works is say I've got, um, I have a sample, I've already set it up to look at one. Uh, in the debug string, right, it's going to look at that comment count sample, uh, which has already been cleaned. So it comes out clean here. But if we were to go in there to our repo, all right, so we're in our comment count. And let's say we go to the readme and maybe I fat finger the view requirements section, right? Or something like that. And I just save that. Uh, and if I run this again, we'll see that it should catch that for us and flag it and say, yeah, you need a view requirements section, right? And it's going to do that for almost everything in these samples. So mm -hmm. it should, the whole goal here is not to, to scare you, right? We're going to run this behind the scenes. If you want to run this, you certainly can. And it will help you identify things. If you don't, we'll run it and help clean your sample as well. So this is more just an FYI for you. So lots of fun, uh, but that would fix that. It'll also suggest things for us, right? So if we were to let's fix that and let's go into our JSON and let's add a, another class. Say we we updated this later and we say plus MS BG color theme primary. Sure, right? So let's add a thing, right? So we added another class on here. If we were to run that. Again, uh, we will also see download it, fix the view requirements section. It will make suggestions for us in terms of what needs to go in our uh, sample.json, right? So it's saying, hey, this class is being used, but we didn't find it in sample JSON. Please add it. Uh, and that's going to be important because the next part of this um, is it will round up. There's actually a roundup function that will round up all of those JSON files and map those to a CSV file. So you can do that as well. So this is the idea of you've got a series of JSON files and you want to map those to a CSV. You can using an XML file that defines those rules. And in this case, you know, I've just got um, path queries here and you know some functionality here uh, that's required, but all of that pulls us into a giant CSV file for our samples. You can see an example of that here. So everything about our samples is here. And then the other part of Farrier is it will generate files. So using a CSV file, uh, this generates all of those files. So you can see we've got this idea of templates and so on. So say the column samples, right? We've got the text here, but then we loop through that CSV file and we output the sample item, which is up here in a template. Again, I'm not trying to teach you how to use Farrier. The idea here is these tooling are available to you. The samples, I mean, the documentation will be updated on that. But all of that is to clean the samples repo and to get everything kind of good to go, right? Uh, so all samples have gone through this process now. I've cleaned every single one, um, and every single one of them should be then represented on our site. So this shouldn't be a problem. So that is not the right window. Do I have a window? There it is. All right, so if we go back to uh, this guy, all right? So if you're in here and you think, you know what, this, this column sample doesn't, like it needs a better category or it's missing something, you can edit that sample.json directly and submit that as a PR. You could submit that as an issue and just flag that as saying, hey, I think this should be in this category and we'll update it. Uh, but the idea here is in the past, we tried these listings, but nothing was automated. So it became very, very difficult um, as, this, as this repository has exploded to keep up with those listings. But because those listings are very, very important, uh, everything is automated now and that automation is made available to you should you want it. All right, so I know I'm right at time, so let's just show you this final thing. So a couple of links for you. Uh, so make sure you check out the, the new changes to the sample repo. I think they'll be very helpful to you. Um, and if you're interested in that community tooling, um, it's just called Farrier. Um, and there's a bunch of details in there, including all of those XML definition files are included in that repo. So you can see exactly how we're doing that. Um, and there's, I forget, there's something like 24 different functions. There's kind of a miniature language in there. So if you need to do some you know, transformation or manipulation in there, you can do all that as well. Okay, so check it out. I will try and get that documentation updated uh, eventually on how to use that. Uh, in the meantime, if you're looking to use that on, say, maybe your own repository or maybe even your own solution, right? So I, I actually use uh, Farrier in Flycon.io to generate those files. So that is the, the icons are not pulled from a database or anything like that. They are actually static code files, but are being generated from a CSV file using Farrier. So Farrier doesn't just do markdown files that like we've got it here. It can do any kind of file type. So I've got those generating TypeScript files, for instance, uh, off a CSV file. So these can be very, very helpful for you. 
Uh, just ping me if you've got any questions about that until we get that documentation updated. But that's uh, that's it. Sorry for the uh, the overall lack of horses, but maybe David will play that sound effect again. <laughs> well, excellent. Thank you, Chris. You've been one very busy little Bronco. See what I did there? Excellent stuff. Really, really cool. <laughs>